battles. They never, never had ventured or endeavored upon this great golden epic without the authority of an Amir. So I'm on the belief that if there's no Amir, proper Amir for the Muslims, that one should reconsider and Allahu A'lam. Uh, we are living in the second age of Jahiliyyah. The first was before the Nabuwa of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam when the people would walk around naked, same-sex marriages and other fitna such as Satanism. Today, the same is happening. Is this a major sign of Qiyamah and was this prophesized? Can you repeat that please? Sorry. We are living in the second age of Jahiliyyah. The first being before the Nabuwa of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam where the people walked around naked and had same-sex marriages and other fitna. Today the same is happening. Is this a major sign of Qiyamah and was this prophesized? It's indefinitely prophesized as a minor sign of the hour. And that is that tribulations will become very, very widely spread. This is an authentic narration in the Qutb al-Sitta. As it being a major sign, no. It's mentioned as a minor sign that yes, tribulations, evil, corruption and so forth will become widely spread and this is exactly what we are witnessing today now many groups say they follow quran and sunnah but they oppose each other for example the tabliq the shia the wahhabi who is on the correct way any claim into the quran and sunnah must be purely followers of the quran and sunnah when we say the quran and sunnah you mean you must adhere strictly unconditionally to the teachings of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in his glorious, sacred, noble, uncreated word, and that which was given on the tongue of our beloved teacher Muhammad Sallallahu Anyone who says he's a follower of that, and thus he goes uh, against it, definitely he is not, he's a liar, and he will not be classified as a person who follows the Quran and Sunnah. So strictly those who uphold the Quran and Sunnah are those who are called on the minhaj of al Quran sunnah Look, I can further illustrate on this. We have been taught in Islam that there will be a ummah, a congregation or a people, a community, that will continue fighting for the truth. These are those who uphold the Quran and sunnah They will continue to uphold the truth and will not be deterred by those who forsake and oppose them. And they will continue on this path to the day of resurrection. Now these are the minority. And the hadith teaches us that they will be stigmatized or scrutinized or ostracized. They are those who do not fear the fear of the blamers or the blame of the blamers. Instead, they adhere to the haq unconditionally Regardless what ABC says, they are strongly upholding the Quran and Sunnah, but they are labeled. They are labeled and stigmatized. And our beloved Sheikh Tariq mentioned earlier on, those who are called Salafis, for example, or those who are called Wahhabis. There's no such thing as Wahhabi. I repeat, we are Muslims, not Wahhabis. Allah Ta'ala says, وَلَا تَمُوتُنَّ إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ he did not say, إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ وَحَبِيُّونَ وَتَبْلِغِيُّونَ وَصُوفِيُّونَ وَنَكْبَنْدِيُّونَ وَجَحْمِيُّونَ Oh, 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 no. يَا أَخْوَةِ الْأَعِزَّاءِ Allah said, إِلَّا وَأَنْتُمْ مُسْلِمُونَ Let us awaken to this reality. Where Muslims are Muslim unconditionally adheres to the Quran and the Sunnah, period. Does not blindly follow any madhab. You can follow a madhab, no problem. But not blindly follow a madhab. I hope you understand the difference. I repeat, following a madhab is not an issue, no problem. Alhamdulillah. But you cannot blindly follow a madhab. Meaning, if the hadith comes to you, authentic, clear as light, huh, you are not allowed to reject it. So if you do that, you are from amongst the Quran and Sunnah. And there will be those, as I said, that little group who will be fighting for the truth. And they will be labeled as being Salafis, Wahhabis, fanatical, fundamentalists, terrorists, overzealous, extremists, and, and, and so forth. 
Do we even know what Wahhabi means? Do we even know why these names exist? Wallahi ya ikhwatil aizad, don't fall for the conspiracy of the English. This is no more than a meaningless appellation. These terms thrown by the Britain in order to disunite us, divide us, weaken us, fragment us, belittle us, humiliate us, degrade us. So we can fight each other. Why are we giving in to this nonsense? To this kufr? Love each other. Help each other. We are Muslims here, are we not? We allow them and we befriend them, but we have enemies within us? This is no more than a meaningless appellation created by the English. When they saw a revival, a reawakening of the Islamic world in the time of Sheikh Muhammad ibn Abdul Wahhab Abu Sulaiman, Rahimahullah Ta'ala, in his time he initiated this. When they saw a reawakening, a revival from India, this started. When they witnessed this, they feared those who uphold the Quran and Sunnah. So, what did they do? In order to awaken this Ummah, to destroy it, so we can fight amongst us, they created this appellation, this title, called Wahhabi. Wallahi, this is proven in their books. In their books. And thus we have used it now. Anyone that calls the Quran and Sunnah, Wahhabi. What? Wahhabi? So Rasulullah is a Wahhabi too. Abu Bakr is a Wahhabi too. Umar al is a Wahhabi too. Dhu Nurain is a Wahhabi too. Abu Turab is a Wahhabi. Sayyidullah and the rest of them are Wahhabis. If that's what you believe in, as being a Wahhabi. What are we supposed to hold? Unto what then? Allah tells you. The rope of Allah, the Quran and the Sunnah. Unconditionally. We are Muslims. We are not Wahhabis. We are not going to give in to those evil conspirers. Awaken. Awaken. And understand the reality of what we are witnessing today. What do you think the Andalus got destroyed? Why? What do you think they allowed? Or we have allowed the invaders to enter Iraq and Afghanistan and Pakistan now and Somalia and the rest of the world. Why? Because we have given in to their conspiracy. Conspiracy. We have given in and fought ourselves and not realizing that our enemy collectively is out there, not in here. And this is a sad situation, Wallahi. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala unite us all, inshallah. On the Quran and Sunnah. You follow a madhab, follow a madhab. Not blindly. If our existence here in Darul Kufr cannot be justified, then is Hijrah to Darul Islam incumbent? And where is Darul Islam? <laughs> Very good question. Where is Darul Islam? Look, basically, regarding the Hijrah, fi sabilillah, the migration for the pleasure and the countenance of the Almighty Allah, when does this occur? Why did the early immigrants leave Mecca? For what reason? Because they were persecuted. No? They were unable to fulfill the obligations of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Now, if you believe that the city that you live in, you are not persecuted, you are able to fulfill your obligations, you are able, then you are like, no problem, inshallah. You can remain in that area, no matter where you are in the world, if you believe this. But once this is endangered and you are unable, then hijrah becomes an obligation then hijrah becomes an obligation. I hope that's understood. Uh, 
Um, it is said in the Quran that catastrophe to a Muslim can be from his own hands or to test his iman. Please analyze this in relation to the Palestinian situation. Um, some things, bad things are said about a big number of Palestinians. Look, we don't want to point the fingers at our brothers and sisters as to what they are doing and what they are not doing. <laughs> Leave the Palestinians out. Look at Jerusalem. Look at Masjid al-Aqsa in its essence. That's what we've got to be referring to. It is under occupation. Zionist, filthy, disgusting, scummy, abominated people. Scum. And we are allowing it. Without any shadow of a doubt, we've got to ID. Because what our hands earn. We receive nothing but what our hands have earned. And this is the reason, not only in Palestine, but a worldwide 